using a heat gun at 13 degrees Fahrenheit in the Wisconsin winter is just a little interesting. It works, it does the thing, but it's a little interesting. Let's get over to the bench and let's talk about what this thing is. This is a broadcast interference filter and it comes to us from Dan K9DP Kilo 9 Delta Papa. Let's get this thing open and see what we've got in the bag. I like this kit because when it's done, it's going to look absolutely sexy. We've got some shrink wrap here, some big shrink wrap. So this is going to go all the way over the circuit board and hide all of the internal guts once we're done. We've got two toroids and we've got two BNC connectors and we've got a little itty bitty purple circuit board so you know where it came from. QRP BCI filter, K9DP.com is where you can get yourself one of these. And we've got capacitors and toroids and magnet wire. And I missed a capacitor in the bag. All right, so this is a K2J102, 332, and 332. So it'll be important to know when we get through farther into the instructions what they're like. My kit came with two lengths of enamel wire, and I've got them unwrapped already. And both toroids are wounded, are wounded, are wound the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and wind one of these. It's fairly straightforward to wind a toroid. Each pass through the center is considered a turn. And you just wanna make sure that you don't kink the wire. It doesn't really matter which direction you go in. It just matters that you get the right number of passes through the center of the core. So there's one, this is number two. And what I do is I put some tension with my thumb and my forefinger on there to keep everything in place. And then I pull it nice and tight so it looks all purdy-like. Don't worry about spacing it out at this point. You can adjust the spacing when you are done. So there is three turns through the center of the core. And we'll be back when we're done. We've got two happy little toroids. Notice that I do not have the most beautiful windings at all. Like I said, you can move these around after you get it installed. So I've got it installed. You can also, if you lose count, I get a little fine tipped pointy tool, pen, stylus, whatever, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can count that way. Or you can set these up in bunches, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five and five is 10 and keep going all the way around. But now that we've got it done, I'm gonna spread these bad boys out. We're gonna make it relatively pretty as pretty as I can make it. So we'll start off by getting them nice and tight first, and then we'll just start, start spread. And it doesn't have to be pretty, because what'll actually happen if you wanted to tune this, if you had yourself a Nano VNA, you could get these guys on your Nano VNA, and then as you spread these apart and contract them together, you will notice that your inductance changes. So that's good enough on that one. Let's do good enough on this one, and let's get on with it. All right, that is good enough on that one. Okay, my soldering iron is warming up. I'm running mine at 640. I've got myself some 6337 solder from Kester. All right, so Dan's instructions say solder the BNC connectors first. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to solder the capacitors first. I take the lowest profile thing, the thing closest to the board, and work my way up to the highest. So it's gonna be the capacitors, then it's gonna be the BNC connectors, then it's gonna be the toroids. Doesn't really matter which way you do it. It just, it kind of, it is what it is. C1 and C3 are 332. C2 is 102. Outer is 332. Inner is 102. Outer is 332. And these are properly spaced, so no bending required or anything. I can just put them right in there. And then I take and gently fold the leads out and gently fold the leads out. And that holds the capacitors in place so they don't fall off the board. Grab a little bit of solder and let's get after it. These small projects like to jump around while you're working. One of these days I'll get a soldering vise. Today is not that day. Set of flush cutters, and we will cut these flush now that they're all soldered. Right, those are done, now we do the BNC connectors. You can see they're a little bit taller than the capacitors are. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to solder down the center conductor, and then I'm gonna check my work so I can make adjustments. Okay, and so this one here is up a little high. So what I can do is I can push it flat onto the board and then reflow this solder. And that makes that pin pop through and now it's nice and flush with the board. We'll do the same thing on the other side here. And now both sides are nice and flush with the board. 
And then the outer connectors are your shield on your coax, and they're also your ground. And this entire circuit board is your ground plane. So you're actually trying to heat up pretty much the whole board and the whole connector all at once. So it might take some extra heat, it might take some extra time, it might take some extra patience. And if you're not careful, it might also heat up your board. So I'm gonna find myself a nice suitable cradle to stop this thing from moving around and to elevate it off the board. And let's try this pair of improvised scissors here. All right, I raised the temperature on my soldering iron. I can see, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but I can see that this center pin isn't getting warm enough. Okay, next up is the inductors. And since these are the same, it doesn't really matter which one you put in which slot. I'm gonna start with L2 because I'm right-handed and it's on the right-hand side. So I'm pushing that one cable through. Yeah, I could have cut it first, I just didn't. There we go with that. And then I'm gonna twist these here to hold it in place. Let's do the next one. Okay, and there we go with our Two toroids, man, that's a good looking setup right there. I like that. The red enamel wire, the purple circuit board, it all looks fantastic. My trick for this, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. Feel free to use your trick. This one is, like I said, this one is my trick. First, I gotta find some way to get these things held in place because this board is round. These, these BNC barrel connectors are round. There we go, just like that. Let's get those wires folded out of the way. I like to burn off the enamel using my soldering iron. So I still have my soldering iron set to a higher temperature from the last time. I put a little bit of solder on the tip there. And then I just let it go for a little bit longer and you can see it and you can kind of smell it. It sort of starts to smell like band-aids. But after you do this a couple of times, you get pretty used to the smell. And if I was thinking what I should have done was I should have tested out these circuit points before putting the solder on. Because when they get close together, they tend to bridge themselves up. And then I tend to go crazy debridging them only to find out that they were connected on the circuit board anyway. Okay, now we can get in there and we can cut them. And it looks to me like the solder mask did its job. Let's double check with a little magnifying glass here. Good, 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 yep. Now for the electrical test. All right, we are all set there. That works. And that is not passing a signal, so we'll have to figure out what's going on. So a little tiny bit of troubleshooting is in order. So from center pin here, you can see the trace. Oh, I can see the trace. Comes over and lands there. And then this one goes from there to there. Yep. So I think it's working as designed. So the only other thing left to do is to stick an antenna on it and try it out. So now we're connected up to the Zygu X6100 through a short coax jumper to the broadcast interference filter to the coax. And you can see that we're getting signals in. Kilo Mike 9 Golf QRP. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Kilo Mexico 9 Germany. QSL, QSL, Kilo Mike 9 Golf. You're 5 9 Wisconsin, 5 watts. Roger, roger, copy the 3-3. Thank you for the contact. Good luck. Okay, folks, looks like it works. You wanna know what the best part about this is? The best part? These things are 20 bucks. Can't beat that for a kit like this. It includes the circuit board, it includes the shrink wrap, it includes all the parts that you need to make the thing, and it includes shipping. So get after it, make it happen. Reach out to Dan, get yourself one of these if you need it. And if you need it, you probably know that you need it. And if you don't need it, it's a fun kit to build for 20 bucks and get you some experience with building filters. If you know me, you know I like the Zygu X6100. It's one of my favorite radios so far in my ham radio career, my ham radio hobby, whatever you wanna call this nonsense that we do, that we love so much. That radio is susceptible to broadcast band interference. And a couple of us have talked about and played with and 
ruminated over these things, but Dan, Dan went out and made one. And this is the result of that. When I was doing the testing, you saw that the continuity didn't go from end to end, from center pin to center pin. It's probably because this thing's filtering out whatever frequency, whatever signal, blah, 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 the tester is sending through. But you saw when we put it on the radio, it worked fine. So I made a little bit of a uh, wheeling around the band. That all works just fantastically. And then I tried doing some parts on the air work. I'm at five watts QRP. I just wanted to get the thing, prove that it worked. And it does. I got a 3.3 three from South Carolina and I sent back a 5.9 because I, I heard the guy just fine. Fantastically, in fact, it was great. So this thing does the thing. It works. What we try to do with this little device here, the inductors right here and the capacitors hidden over here is filter out any frequency below the lowest ham band, 160 meters, which gets you into the AM broadcast band. And the AM broadcast band usually has stronger signals that would overload the front end of the radio and make it harder to use on some other frequencies, some other harmonics of those frequencies, et cetera, et cetera, because of how strong they are. So if you're getting some weird interference and there happens to be an AM station nearby, nearby is relative in terms of time of day, there's some clear channel signals at night that get really strong and other signals that are strong during the day and so on. AM is an interesting band and that's a whole nother discussion. But you might be suffering from this and Dan has a way of taking care of this for you with this little kit. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward to build. There's a link in the description down below to Dan's website. There's a link to Toad's Discord also where you can talk to Dan and you can get yourself one of these little jobbies here. We will see you all over in the next video up there. Thanks for being awesome.